the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Welcome to our service for Trinity Sunday. Thank you for joining me again. There are two things that vicars try to do on Trinity Sunday. The first is they try to be away on holiday and thus giving somebody else the responsibility of explaining the rather complicated doctrine of the Trinity. And secondly, if they can't be away, they pray and hope that it's a family service. This then gives them the excuse to take a slightly less complicated approach to the subject matter in hand. Well, today I should have been away on holidays, but thankfully it was also meant to be a family service. So I hope you enjoy the all age approach and let's explore the Trinity together in as many ways as we can. But first of all, our prayer of introduction. Heavenly Father, we come together to bring our praises and love to you. We come to hear your word to pray for the world that you have given to us and to ask your forgiveness for the time to let you down. We pray that your Holy Spirit will fill our hearts with love, that we may always praise you. Amen. And so we come to our prayers of forgiveness. Loving God, we remember how you came to show us how to love. Yet often we let you down and do not love one another. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, we remember how you call us to follow you. Yet often we do not seem to hear your voice and go our own way. Christ, have mercy. Holy Spirit, you guide us to make the right choices, yet often we are afraid and do what others want. Lord, have mercy. May the Father forgive you and by his Holy Spirit help you to be more like Jesus. Amen. Good morning everyone. Today's reading is Matthew chapter 28 verses 16 to 20. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father 
and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always, to the end of the age. As a family, when our children were growing up, we benefited enormously from the books in the Teddy Horsley series. And you can see Teddy Horsley on the front of this particular booklet. The children adored these books. And even though they were meant and intended for infants and younger, our children engaged with them up until 11 years of age. I think it had something to do with the questions in the back of the booklet that kept them and us engaging with the subject matter and using the booklet as a springboard for prayer. So wonderful booklets. I highly recommend them if you have young children in your family or indeed grandchildren as we now have these booklets were written by a very eminent theologian called Professor Leslie Francis. And he was very, very brave at taking the theology of quite difficult subjects and making them accessible and engaging to young children. Now I've asked Hannah if she would read this particular booklet to you. Um, it's called The Rainy Day. And it's about Teddy Horsley praising Father, Son and Holy Spirit. So it's about the subject of the Trinity, but again aimed at young children. So I hope you enjoy the story as told by Hannah. And I'll somehow get the questions in the back of the booklet to you so that you can have a look what we were discussing when our kids were young. Enjoy. The Rainy Day. Teddy Horsley praises Father, Son and Holy Spirit. It is a rainy day and Teddy Horsley is a curious bear. He sees the raindrops and hears them splash into the pool. He watches the cat fleeing through the downpour. It is a freezing day, and Teddy Horsley is a curious bear. Teddy Horsley peers through the icy glass and traces the patterns of the frost. He sees the icicles forming on the snow-covered treetops. He watches the ducks sliding on the pond. It is a steamy day, and Teddy Horsley is a curious bear. He sees the steam rising from the freshly watered plants in the greenhouse. He gazes up at the white clouds scudding across blue sky. He watches the haze rising from the wet road. Teddy Horsley peers through the open window and feels the heat of the day. Teddy Horsley knows that the wet rain, the cold ice and the hot steam are all the same water. It is Trinity Sunday and Teddy Horsley is a curious bear. Teddy Horsley looks around at the fields, the trees and the sky. He trusts God the Father, who made the world. Teddy Horsley looks at the cross, the font, 
and the communion cup. He trusts God the Son, who redeemed humankind. Teddy Horsley looks at the young children, the parents and the grandparents. He trusts God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God. Teddy Horsley knows that the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit are all the same God. Lord, thank you for all that you are. Help us by your Holy Spirit to experience something more of you today in Jesus name. Amen. Well good morning um, we're looking at uh, Trinity Sunday today. Uh, it strikes fear into every um, every preacher. It's how to preach on the nature of God three and one. It's complex how can you explain the unexplainable. So yes um, here we go. Um, in the day the Bible and through the creeds of the church we uh, understand God's made up of three parts. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Separate but all one in unity, the triune God. Now to be fair, that's more or less all I'm gonna say on the Trinity, as I'm neatly sidestepping that to look at some of the specifics of our gospel reading. But I just wanted to give a bit of the background. From the gospel reading, I wanted to look at doubt and loving obedience. So two areas, so here goes. In our reading in verse 17, it says, When they saw him, that's Jesus, they worshipped him, but some doubted. It's always great to worship God. And I know at the moment we don't uh, gather in church, but we're in church singing hymns. If it's uh, doing our bits for the church um, and just out, you know, our work, our day to day work, uh, this acts of love and kindness, it's all worship to God. But it's also okay to have doubts. We might not always feel full of faith, we might not always feel like worshipping God. And the current times, yeah, they are a bit strange. <laughs> we, we understand that, you know, life is sort of different. Uh, and like for myself, I've started to sometimes feel a bit start to question, well, what's this all about? You know, where's God in, in all this? Uh, where's God in me? Um, yeah, sometimes I feel like I don't feel as godly as I think I should be. But the fact is God listens and hears us and he loves us. In verses 19 and 20, Jesus commands his followers to make disciples of all nations. But he also says he will be with them until the end of the age. Jesus gave this great commission to make disciples. He wasn't leaving them alone. He loved them so much that he died for them and he understood their doubts and fears. For us, Jesus promises that he will always be with us by his spirit. He won't reject us when we get it wrong or mess up. He is always with us. Now, we've recently gone through um, That Kingdom Come, the recent uh, initiative, and I, I did find it very helpful, I'm sure uh, many other people did. Uh, now, on the, particularly on the day eight, I was having a bit of a wobble, feeling a bit doubtful and fearful. Um, but the day's notes were titled, Who Shall Separate Us? And the reading was from Romans 8, 37 to 39. And uh, I'll just read that now. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Our Lord.
What joy. We can, we're not going to be separated from God's love. Hallelujah. If he loves me unconditionally, why wouldn't I want to obey him and please him? We obey God out of a loving response to the love that he first showed to us. And he will always be with us. We can now respond to God in confidence and love. That kingdom come encouraged us to pray for five people to come to know Jesus. And as we pray for them, now perhaps it's time for us to look to the opportunities to be the answer to those prayers. So perhaps in the week ahead, I'm going to sort of slightly reword a well-known slogan at the moment. But this might be something for us to, to reflect on and remember um, and just to look for ways to um, to respond to God and to, um, uh, to be an answer to our prayers. And that slogan is, stay alert, respond to the Holy Spirit, save lives. I just want to remember, this is uh, just my prayer. And my prayer is that you would fully know that God the Father's love for you, shown in the death of his son Jesus on the cross, who now dwells in us through the Holy Spirit, and that you may respond to him, in loving worship and obedience that God calls people into his kingdom. Amen. We're going to be lifting up our prayers to God today using a finger labyrinth. As we go into the labyrinth, we go in with our intercessions and as we come out of the labyrinth, we come out with a prayer for ourselves. At each junction or turn, we'll bring a new situation or person or people to God. So we start by recognising that God is with us. And we say, Father, be with us. At our first junction, we pray for all those who are ill. Maybe we have some people in our mind and we pray, may your healing touch be upon them. 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 At our next turn, we pray for the grieving, for those who have lost people in difficult times and indeed for any loss and we pray may your loving arms wrap around them may your loving arms wrap around them may your loving arms wrap around them May your loving arms wrap around them. May your loving arms wrap around them. At our next turn, we pray for all those who are struggling, maybe financially, emotionally, in any way. And we pray, may you provide 
what they need. May you provide what they need. May you provide what they need. May you provide what they need. May you provide what they need. May you provide what they need. May you provide what they need. At our next turn, we pray for our leaders. At this time, we think of governments, our government, and those around the world. And we ask, God, give them wisdom. God, give them wisdom. God, give them wisdom. God, give them wisdom. At our next turn, we think of all those who are searching for a cure. We think of all those working, all those scientists and researchers. And we pray, God help them and guide them. God help them and guide them. At our next turn, we pray for our churches, for all the people that make up our church, for all the adults and all the children. And we pray, Father, guide us to shine for you. Father, guide us to shine for you. Father, guide us to shine for you. At our next turn, we think about how we want God to break out in this land, in its people and its communities. And we pray, Thy kingdom come. 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 And at this last turn, we want to thank God that he's heard and he's listened. As he says in Chronicles, now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayers offered in this place. So we say, thank you, loving Father. Thank you, loving Father. Thank you, loving Father. And as we prepare to come out of the labyrinth, we think of the words from Psalm 17, verse 8. Hide me in the shadow of your wings, which speaks of God's support, care and protection. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. 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 Hide me 
in the shadow of your wings. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. Amen. Almighty and eternal God, you have revealed yourself as Father, Son and Holy Spirit and live and reign in the perfect unity of love. Hold us firm in this faith that we may know you in all your ways and evermore rejoice in your eternal glory, who are three persons yet one God, now and forever. Amen. God the Father, watch over you. God the Son, walk with you. God the Spirit, work through you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen.